was a child, um, whenever I visited my grandparents in Germany, my grandmother would take me on to the train station just to ride trains wherever. Because to me, riding a train was pretty much always the most fun thing I could do in Germany. Because there are no trains in Iceland. And so, yeah, for a small child like myself visiting Germany, that was like one of the highlights of every visit, you know, to get the experience of being on a train. Now, yes, I was a pretty simple-minded child with very boring hobbies, no doubt about that. But, interestingly enough, there did at one point exist one Icelandic railroad. And I'm going to tell you about why it ended up being the only one. For the longest time, Iceland was one of the most undeveloped countries in all of Europe. It wasn't even a real country, it was seen, at least by Denmark, as simply a province of Denmark. However, as Iceland started to get smitten by the Industrial Revolution during the 19th century, a lot of high-minded business people and uh, uh, politicians started to toy with the idea of uh, of moving Iceland from the Dark Ages and into the modern era by setting up an Icelandic rail network. Well, not really a network. The preliminary idea has uh, called for a railroad to be constructed from Reykjavik that would uh, stretch into the Sutherlands, Unterlandi, possibly as far as Thjorsau. Now, why this particular route? Well, because the Sutherlands Interlending, as, as I have mentioned before, is Iceland's bread basket. That is where most of the farm produce uh, was produced and is still being produced. And since the majority of the population lived in Reykjavik, and uh, also because from Reykjavik and harbors in the area, steamships then uh, carried off much of this produce. Uh, little of it uh, abroad, mainly uh, sheep related product, but also potatoes and other produce was transported to the rest of the island. At that point in time, the idea of building a railroad to better connect Reykjavik with the bread basket may not have seen such an uh, outlandish idea, however, they were never able to attract any serious investors or capital. During the 1900s, the uh, cabinet of Hannes Hofstedt did uh, make some inquiries about the possibility of uh, building Iceland's first uh, railroad. However, again, however, they focused more on the possibility of uh, having it a government-funded uh, operation rather than the rather than the prim preliminary ideas that called for attracting foreign investors. However, since no foreign investors had been attracted, uh, basically the only route open was to now uh, have it uh, a nationally uh, founded uh, project. However, since the cabinet was already involved in a lot of other infrastructure projects, uh, as well as uh, building up ice and school system, there simply was no money left for what would have been at the time the most ambitious uh, uh, infrastructure undertaking in all of Iceland's history. However, several years down the line, another infrastructure project took place, which was the most uh, expensive and ambitious infrastructure project of Iceland at the time, which was the construction of the new Reykjavik harbor. Now, compared to, comparative to the harbor of Reykjavik today, it was probably kind of minuscule. After all, Reykjavik only had a population of around 7,000 at the start of the century. However, this new harbor, which which was started, which uh, of whose construction started in, uh, in around the year 1913, did require a lot of uh, stone and uh, dirt as building materials. So, the the first Icelandic railroad was constructed, connecting the Öskjuhlíð, where uh, which is today where you'll find Perlan, with the harbor. So this railroad of only a few kilometers was mainly used to transport rocks and other building materials from Eskjuhlíð to the harbor. Two locomotives were purchased as well as several uh, rail cars and a single lane tr uh, track of railroad was constructed 
on this route. And uh, some had the ideas that from there the railroad might even expand and uh, revitalize the uh, older ideas of connecting uh, the southern uh, part of Iceland with Reykjavik via rail and beyond in the faraway future connect most of Iceland via rail. However, all of these plans fell through because again, no capital. Now, building a larger rail network wasn't just a matter of uh, gaining capital, but also, uh, let's say they built a railroad connecting Reykjavik to Selfoss and then that railroad would continue a little longer, say to Thursa. The problem was also that of, well, simple logistics. You see, at the time, although Reykjavik was a home to almost 10% of the Icelandic population, and many Icelanders also lived in the surrounding areas of the Sidrans Vintelenti, the vast majority of Icelanders still lived in these areas, so a railroad there would have not affected the, them very much, if at all. Thus the final nail in the coffin of the prospects of Icelandic railroads was really the government of uh, Tryggvi Thórhattsson, um, the first uh, progressive party government. Now, being that the Progressive Party is the party of rural people, they were not very content with spending money on a project that only benefited a few select people or, well, a minority of the population in a certain area of the land, because at the time, we're talking about the late 20s, early 30s, cars were becoming much more prevalent in Iceland, and although roads were still bad, to say the least, a lot of roads had still been, connect, uh, been built that connected a lot of uh, counties to their nearest towns and slowly but surely these towns would also get uh, connected via roads. And to the government at the time it just seemed uh, much more practical to slowly but surely invest money in, in roads and bridges uh, because they could be applied any, anywhere be, versus a railroad would take much longer for it to connect all of Iceland. So, the railroads between Öskjöli and the uh, Reykjavik harbor ceased all operations in 1928. Now that was more than 10 years after the, they finished the construction of the Reykjavik harbor, so what exactly this uh, railroad was used for in the last 10 years, I don't know, and I, can't, and I have to assume that it wasn't being used for a whole lot, basically. But yeah, the idea of having railroads in Iceland has come about every now and again since then. In the 80s it was uh, discussed in detail well, again due to the prospects of ever, uh, ever growing uh, fuel prices. And again in this decade it was discussed, uh, the, the idea to connect Keplavik and Reykjavik via railroad was also discussed. However, ever since 1974 the, the ring, Icelandic Ring Road has connected pretty much all of Iceland and race. <coughs> oh, sorry. Beer. But yeah, ever since 1974, the Icelandic Ring Road, or Road Number 1, was finally completed. Thus, pretty much all of Iceland, except the West Church and Slavitsness, could be navigated on a single road that went all around the entire island. So the roads and the cars simply won out. Much more practical, can be used pretty much anywhere and don't require nearly as much the capital going to a single localized project. And as of today, Iceland does boast of one of the highest car ownership in the entire world. In fact, there are actually more registered vehicles in Iceland than there are people. A ratio of like 1.05 vehicles per person, but that is mainly due to the abundance of you know, company uh, cars, uh, rental cars, trucks, rescue, uh, rescue vehicles, stuff like that, but yeah. So, the story of uh, the Eisenhower Railroad never made it past what is currently not just the boundaries, of, not even the boundaries of Reykjavik, but the boundaries of old Reykjavik. Oh yeah.
Anyway, the two locomotives that were purchased for the railroad, railroad do still exist. One of them is on display next to the Reykjavik Harbor, and the other one, I believe, is located in the Aurbayarsab Museum, if you ever want to see them. They were not impressive in any, in any shape or form, but a lot of Icelandic children and adults look at them nowadays and just think, man, those were strange times back when there was an actual railroad in Iceland even though it was only like four kilometers long. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting and like and subscribe and have a nice day.